Hello, Duffy's Tavern, where the elite meets eat. Archie, the man you're speaking. Duffy ain't here. Hello, Duffy. Well, I'm busy painting the Christmas Eve sign. Uh, it says, uh, Jumbo Monstrous Christmas Party at Duffy's Tavern. Dancing, entertainment, favors for ladies, eight-course dinner, Charles Coburn of Santa Claus, price per couple, one dollar. <laughs> I know the price is silly, but it's Christmas Eve, so let's clip them a little bit. <laughs> yeah, that's right, Duffy. Charles Coburn, the big, portly gentleman with a sharp tongue, you know, sort of a bloated Clifton Webb. <laughs> yeah, very distinguished and aristocratic looking, and guess what he wears? Well, what does a gentleman look through with only one eye? <laughs> No, not a keyhole. <laughs> Coburn uh, wears a monocle, you know. Yeah, just like them Englishmen, only instead of a lip, it helps him keep a stiff upper eye. <laughs> Why did I ask him to come down? Well, you know, for the Christmas party, we're going to need somebody to play Santa Claus. And, you know, things is a little slow in Hollywood, so... I figure for a few bucks and a free meal, he'll jump at the chance. <laughs> Okay, I'll call you back, Duffy. Now, Eddie, uh, leave us make the joint real nice and Christmassy, huh? All red and green. Well, I already started. How? I rearranged the free lunch. Oh, good. Uh, what did you use for red? Tomatoes. Uh-huh. What did you use for the green? The liverwurst. <laughs> That's such a deep green. <laughs> How come you didn't use the lettuce? Well, that's uh, purple. I'm saving that for Easter. <laughs> well, when you get finished, I think I have another cute little yuletide touch, Eddie. You know them reminders we sent to our delinquent accounts, the ones where we say, pay off in ten days, you swindling skunk, or we'll throw you in the clink? <laughs> yeah. Get this. With each letter, I'm enclosing a sprig of holly. <laughs> now, let's see. Oh, yeah. Oh, Eddie, uh, hand me uh, a cake of soap, huh? Soap? Yeah, soap. You got a new girl? <laughs> no. Well, then what do you want with soap? Well, I want to write a poem on the mirror. You know, me annual Christmas poem. Oh, you got a new one. Yep, and this one's terrific, Eddie. You know, in the past, I have always used iambic pentameter. But this year, I... I felt more in a trophy mood. <laughs> and it came out much better. Uh, what's a trophy? You use more colons. Uh, <laughs> would you like to hear the poem, Eddie? Have I got any choice? <laughs> no. Yes. <laughs> okay, listen. Merry Christmas to you all. Be of right cheer and joyous. Leave us Yule a log on the fire, and leave not naught annoy us. Come lift your beakers and quaff us a skull, press Kringles abroad in the snow. I quaff, lads, and laugh, lads. Ha ha, he he, ho ho. <laughs> well, Eddie, what do you think of it? Ha ha, he he, ho ho. <laughs> In other words... In other words, it'll go beautifully with that cracked mirror. Eddie, give me that soap. And while I'm writing a poem, I want you to hang up them wreaths here. Uh, Where'll I hang them? Well, uh, leave one dangle over each table. Well, that'll save time. What do you mean? Hmm, after the customer's finished eating, we can lay the wreath right on his chest. <laughs> Eddie, don't be such a ghoul, will you? Archie. Yeah, Miss Duffy? I have a message from Papa. Huh? He says that on Christmas, we don't do much business here anyway. Yeah, huh? So you and Eddie can take Christmas Day off. Gee, that's nice. And he says that on account of it's Christmas... Yeah, He'll only dock you for half a day. <laughs> Miss Duffy, is it true that your father is learning to walk on his hands so he can save the cost of shoe leather? <laughs> what a cheap crumb. Archie, you just don't understand, Papa. He really has a very lovable character. It's just that he's so nasty, nobody notices it. 
And uh, what are you getting this lovable character for Christmas? Oh, I don't know. I was thinking of getting something that Papa and Mama could both use. Something practical. How about a set of boxing gloves? <laughs> don't be ridiculous. Mama and Papa happen to be very much in love. How do you figure that? They've got to be in love. How else could they stand each other? <laughs> By the way, Archie, where do you think is the best place for me to hang these mistletoes? Mistletoes? How many you got there? Let's see. One, two, three, four, five. Steffi, why are you hanging seven mistletoes? Out of respect to our guest tonight. Charlie Coburn? Yeah. I figure he isn't as young as he used to be. So wherever I'm standing, he won't have to run too far to get to me. <laughs> Duffy, I'm, I'm afraid you're making the wish the grandfather to the door. <laughs> oh, no, I'm not. The last time he was down here, I noticed a very warm look in his eye. Are you kidding? He ain't had a warm look in his eye for 40 years. <laughs> last time he did have one, it steamed up his monocle so he couldn't see what he was getting hot about anyway. <laughs> How come you're making passes at Coburn? Now, uh, what about that boyfriend of yours, that Rodney Haybinder? Oh, him. What's the trouble? I just found out what he's getting me for Christmas. A two-dollar bottle of perfume. Did you ever hear of anything so cheap? Just a minute. Two dollars for perfume might not be cheap. It all depends. Is it a quarter or a fifth? <laughs> Archie, everybody knows that perfume doesn't come in quarts or fifths. This is a pint. <laughs> Two dollars a pint, it ought to be at least 80 proof. <laughs> what did you expect? Well, I thought he'd at least get me a fur coat or maybe an alligator bag. An alligator bag? What would you do with it? You ain't got an alligator. <laughs> well, thank goodness I ain't got no problems about Christmas. I'm giving all my dames the same present. What? A nice practical gift and yet very attractive. What is it? My picture. <laughs> I was, uh, I was going past this snapshot parlor the other day, and I had six lovely portraits made. Here, take a look. Hmm. Seems a shame to waste these pictures on Christmas. They're such a natural for Halloween. <laughs> uh, hello, Art. Oh, hiya, Finnegan. Well, it looks like it's Christmas again, huh? It is? Yeah. Hmm. Seems like only last year. <laughs> Hey, Arch, guess who's here with me tonight? Oh, me brother Wilfred. Wilfred? Uh, is that the tall, fat, ugly one? No, that's me mother. <laughs> well, but speaking brother, you know, the, the black sheep of the family. The black sheep? Yeah, the one with the brains. <laughs> oh, that one. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, the one with the high Q. The what? <laughs> the high Q. It's the way they measure brains. Uh, in other words, uh, high Q is a scientific nickname for a genius, you know. Uh, liberally translated, it means intelligent quadruped. <laughs> yeah, huh? What a bum break. You know, the rest of our family are just average, normal people like me. And poor Wilfred has to be a genius. <laughs> well... You gotta take the bitter with the sweet, then again. Why don't you first find out about it? Well, the first time we realized he was abnormal was when we seen him reading the newspaper without moving his lips. <laughs> well, well, leave us hope for the best. Maybe the kid'll just turn out to be a ventriloquist. <laughs> Oh, Duffy, huh? You just sent me a package, but I shouldn't open till Christmas? It's a present? Wait a minute. Are you sure this is Duffy? <laughs> well, Duffy, I'm positively whelmed over. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Uh, uh, by the way, I'm uh, putting my present in the mail for you today, too. Uh, yeah, it's nice to know that we feel this way about each other at Christmas time. You know, that one back washes the other. Yeah, well, thanks a lot, Duffy. Let me see. Eddie, what can I get Duffy for Christmas? 
When? In Roper. I got it. I'll send him one of me portraits. I didn't think you hated him that much. <laughs> Let's see. I think I'll autograph me portrait by saying something nice to Duffy. Let's see. To my lovable employer, Duffy, in fond appreciation of all I have done for you. <laughs> Signed, Archie. Hmm. Wonder what he's given me, Eddie. Uh, what do you guess? Oh, I don't know. Maybe some silk shirts, or a nice striped bathrobe, or polo outfit. No, no, he knows I don't play polo. And that would also eliminate the bathrobe. <laughs> um, Eddie, one does not play polo in a bathrobe. Hey, Arch. Yeah, Finnegan. He's the brother Wilfred. Do you remember him? Oh, yeah. Well, how are you, little Wilfred? Why, you certainly have been growing. Doesn't that strike you as an entirely normal procedure? Well, <laughs> that's how it goes. <laughs> uh, tell me, how's things in school, Wilfred? Are your teachers learning you much stuff? Archie, they're not learning me. They're teaching me. Well, that's what they're there for. Uh, well, you're certainly looking fine, Wilfred. Uh, very manly. Uh, are you eating good? Yes, I receive sufficient nourishment, thank you. <laughs> well, you got to eat good if you want to grow up to be a strong man like your Uncle Archie. You know how I got this physique of mine? Malnutrition. <laughs> yes, sir, and plenty of it. Lots of bread, potatoes, pancakes. Well, I'm on a diet that prohibits carbohydrates. Carbo what rates? <laughs> carbohydrates. Oh, oh, damn. Yeah, tell me, uh, what's them things again? Starches, of course. Oh, yeah, it was right on the tip of his tongue. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what about them, uh... My physician doesn't permit me to have starches. Well, that's right, Well, the starches ain't good for you. They make your stomach stiff. <laughs> and tell you what, why don't you go over and nibble yourself some of the free lunch, huh? The free lunch? Yeah. Very well. Moratori te salutamos. What does that mean? We who are about to die salute you. <laughs> A wisecrack in dead languages, yet. Finnegan. Yeah, Lord. Finnegan, get this Greek Milton Boyle away from me before I knock his blocks off. Small <laughs> Rhetorium Salami Thomas. Oh, Miss Archie, huh? ain't that Charles Coburn coming in? Oh, yeah, that's Charlie. And look at him, Eddie. What a perfect Santa Claus you'll make, huh? That ruddy complexion, that roly poly figure, that plump bay winner. It's a perfect Santa Claus, except for one thing. For what? That, uh, sack in the back is a little too low slung. <laughs> well, greetings, Mr. Cobain. <laughs> Mr. Cobain, it's a distinct privilege to humble your gracious presence to the inner confines of this immortal sanctum. Oh, and... uh, shut up. Where? Where's Duffy? He's home. He's smart. <laughs> this guy's gonna make a lovable Santa Claus. <laughs> Mr. Coburn, you're acting kind of strange. Uh, ain't you been, ain't you glad to be here at the tavern? Well, yes, I am. Thank you. At my age, I'm glad to be anywhere. <laughs> I mean, your age. You ain't changed a bit since I last seen you. Well, you don't look so hot yourself. <laughs> Laugh a minute, Charlie, they call me. Well, nevertheless, we're glad to see you on this return visit. Return visit? Yeah, you've been here before. Yeah, 
impossible. One doesn't do this sort of thing twice. <laughs> Charlie, you were here about two years ago. Amazing. I've been telling my psychiatrist it was only a dream. <laughs> you know what? At your age, dreams is a lot more fun, ain't they? <laughs> what? Sorry, no intense offended. I'm really very sorry. Hey, uh, how about introducing me? Introduce yourself. Okay. Oh, Mr. Coburn. Sir? <laughs> I am Miss Duffy. You have my deepest sympathy. So likewise, I'm sure. <laughs> You know something? What? You're handsome. You know something? <laughs> what? You're nearsighted. Mr. Hogan, you think you could be happy with a girl like me on your lap? Are you kidding? A guy'd be happy if he just had a lap. Archie, you stay out of this. Oh, Mr. Coburn. What is it? Look where I'm standing. Right under the mistletoe. So what? <laughs> well, are you going to kiss me? Uh, tell you what. You hang from the ceiling and I'll kiss the mistletoe. <laughs> uh, incidentally, uh, Charlie, come on over and take a look at our mistletoe. I'll hold off my stuffy with a salad for. <laughs> Very okay. well. Good. Oh, jingle bell, jingle bell, jingle all this. Hey, look who's under the mistletoe. And you just kissed Charlie Coburn, and without an introduction. Sorry, Arch, I guess I've gone Hollywood. <laughs> Charlie, maybe you should have settled for Miss Duffy. Well, yes, at least she didn't have a cigar in her mouth. That can be arranged. <laughs> Get out of here, the both of you. Imagine kissing Charlie Coburn. Yeah, I guess I'll hate myself in the morning. <laughs> well, Archie... Don't think this hasn't been peculiar, but... Uh... Uh, look, Charlie, don't go yet. Tell me, what are you doing Christmas Eve? Christmas Eve? Yeah. Well, we have an old custom in our family, Archie. I always take Grandma to the fights. <laughs> oh, that's very sweet, but this time, why don't you let the dame go stay? Uh, now, here's what I had in mind. We need a Santa Claus for our Christmas party, and I was thinking that... We got some whiskers for you that, uh, maybe... Oh, no, 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 wait a minute. Me spend my Christmas in this rodent's rotisserie? <laughs> rodent's rotisserie? Uh, you won't do it, huh? Absolutely not. You won't, huh? Oh, Miss Duffy, Finnegan... Mistletoe time. Oh, good. Don't move, Mr. Calvert. Oh, jingle bells, oh, jingle bells. Oh, not that again. Okay, then. Look, Charlie, you're dead. The joint is loaded with mistletoe, and you ain't got a chance unless I protect you. So what do you say? Will you or will you not be Santa Claus? Ho, ho, ho. On, dancer, on, prancer. On, dunder, <laughs> Charlie, believe me, you'll love playing Santa Claus Christmas Eve. Giving out toys to all them little kids. Don't forget, you was a kid once yourself, wasn't you? There's no record of it. <laughs> well, I probably didn't keep records in them days. Uh, come on, Charlie, you'll feel better just as soon as you talk to one of these kids and see what it's like. Hey, wait a minute. Hey, Finnegan, is your kid brother Wilfred still here? Yeah, he's right here, Arch. Good. Hey, Wilfred, come here. I'd like you to meet Santa Claus. Well, well, not the Santa Claus. That's right, young man. Ho, ho, ho. <laughs> well, son, I'll be coming down the chimney Christmas Eve, down your chimney. Thank you very much, but we have an oil burner. <laughs> Wilfred, look, don't you believe in Santa Claus? Santa Claus is an ancient superstition and a throwback to pagan mythology. Does that mean he does or he don't believe it? <laughs> Enough of this nonsense, Mr. Claus. Yes? 
I understand you live up the North Pole. Do I? Oh, I mean, uh, uh, well, yes, of course I do. I also understand that the average temperature of the North Pole is estimated at 70 to 90 degrees below zero Fahrenheit. Well, it does get a bit nippy. But then again, a fellow can always uh, grab off a snort of... Uh... Hand with claws. <laughs> Wilbur, uh, Sandy only drinks soft drinks, of course. <laughs> yes, although on occasion I will take a jigger of snow with an olive in it. <laughs> so, be sure that you're a good boy now, Wilfred, because on Christmas Eve, Santy calls on every good boy and girl. How does he know where they live? I thought that question had popped up. <laughs> uh, Santa Claus keeps their numbers in a little red book. <laughs> Don't you, Santa? Yes, sir. Yes, sir -y. And some mighty fine numbers in that little red book. <laughs> Mighty fine numbers, yes, sir. Oh, this is ridiculous, preposterous. Huh? Well, you mean you don't believe in Santa Claus? Archie, please. It's an amusing legend, but this road company, Edwin Gwen, plays him so badly. <laughs> Whoa. No, 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 you little grumpy, you. Oh, please, Santa Claus, please. Leave go of the little boy's throat. Then get me out of here. Well, look, John, Charlie, I'm, I'm sorry it turned out like this, but, but you can't let us down. You, you promised you'd be here on Christmas Eve. Don't worry, Archie. I'll be here on Christmas Eve. Playing Santa Claus? Playing Santa Claus, yes, playing Santa Claus. With a nice big bag over my back. And you know what I hope to have in that bag? What? Wilfred. <laughs> Now, look, you lousy little genius. Now, now, Archie, please, you don't actually expect an educated man of ten to believe in Santa Claus. Don't I? Look, Wilfred, maybe there ain't no real Santa Claus with no red coat and reindeers and something uh, jumping down chimneys. Okay, but there is something that a kid like you should get wise to. Something that kind of makes people do wonderful things for each other at Christmas time. And I like to call it Santa Claus. It's, it's, well, it's something inside of all of us, kid, that if we're right, guys will turn each one of us into a Santa Claus. We're every guy loving his fella guy and working with him to bring good in the world and maybe peace. And, kid, don't tell me there ain't no that kind of a Santa Claus. That's telling them, Mr. Archie, and... Hey, huh? this package just came for you. Let me look. Hey, Wilfred, come here. Look at this. It's me present from Duffy. Now, Wilfred, <clears throat> here's what I was talking about. This package says, don't open until Christmas. But I want to teach you a lesson, so I'm going to open it. Now, you see, here's a guy named Duffy. He's mean, and he's stingy, and he's cheap. And yet, at Christmas time, he changes. And he gives me this... It's... This picture of himself. <laughs> Autograph to my dear employee, Arch. Where was it? <clears throat> oh, yeah. Oh, you see, Wilfred, maybe there ain't no real Santa Claus with no red coat jumping down chimneys. But I believe that... <laughs>